Welcome to USA Global TV and Radio, where our mission is to provide education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. USA Global TV and Radio connects you with experts and audiences all around the world every single day to help you succeed in business and to live a richer life. Visit us at usaglobaltv.com to learn about career and life-changing training and mentoring programs like The Listening Mentor. Subscribe to our newsletter to stay informed about our special programs and offers. Discover how you can become a guest on one of our shows or a host or producer of a USA Global TV and radio show of your very own. That's USA Global TV and radio, where the doctor is always in. Hello and welcome back to uh, USA Global TV and Radio. Um, good morning, good afternoon and good evening from wherever you are in the world. And also we'd love to welcome our new viewers on Roku Worldwide and Amazon Fire. It's a delight to have you here. And very soon we're also going to be on Apple TV. So I hope you can join us from wherever you like to connect. So welcome to today's episode of Authentic Achievements where I am delighted to be joined by the fabulous Robert J. Moore. Robert, welcome. Welcome today. <laughs> Lovely to see you. How are things? Uh, it's been hectic. It's been hectic. I've been uh, selling two franchises at the same time, opening a new one up, a new uh, coaching business, and uh, doing all the, all the stuff in between. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so certainly a busy time. So before we this, this is actually mild to me. Okay. This is mild to me. I, I'm I'm a go-getter. I'm the kind of person if if I don't have a lot going on, I'm bored. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we need that. We we need to you know, I always think I'm I'm best when I'm busy and uh, because I don't have time to worry about how busy I am. <laughs> Whereas when I'm less busy, I can waste my time <laughs> convincing myself I'm busy really. So I think sometimes our, our brains work better, don't they? But before we get into the into the conversation, let me tell the audience a little bit more about you, and then I'd love for you to share with us your journey. So you've already done so much. You have been prominently featured in Forbes and Disrupt magazine. You're an internationally awarded bestseller, the founder of Magnetic Entrepreneur uh, Incorporated, um, which encompasses Magnetic Entrepreneur Publishing, You've played a key role in achieving Guinness World Record and Global Recognition Awards and impacted numerous lives through your coaching programs um, and also um, received noteworthy awards, including nine for your 2023 documentary, Reinventing Freedom, which chronicles your inspirational journey from homelessness and prison to achieving recognition in Forbes and really is that testament to your resilience and triumphs. You've had quite 
You've had quite the journey already, Robert, haven't you? It's been interesting. Well, look, here, here's Forbes, Guinness, and the, the, the film. I was also writing for Forbes. Um, I had the same lifestyle as Steve Gillen. Uh, we know each other for, for way back. I mean, he's an ex-mob boss. I'm an ex, you know, with the, let's say, I was an enforcer for the bikers and the mob. <laughs> so, so I'll be really polite to you. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, I, I'm not I'm not vicious, right? I, I laugh things off now. I mean, there's there's always a way to do things. I've done my 17 years in jail, you know I mean? In and out, lived on the streets. I'm 18 years clean and sober today. Congratulations. Now, people, now, the thing is, when people look at me now, they, it's funny because they don't visualize me as that person. Yeah, yeah. But they know when they work with me, I'm going to be straight up and honest. I'm a, I'm a straightforward kind of guy, and I don't hold no bullshit. I, I tell it as it is. I care more about their business than I do their emotions. Yeah, yeah. Because their emotions are going to get in the way for what they're going to do in their business. And I've brought businesses. Like, I've worked with all the people from the movie The Secret. All the people from Thick and Grow Rich. As a matter of fact, I'm being certified as I speak as Thick and Grow Rich, one of the uh, certified uh, coaches from them. I know the owner really well. We work together. He's one of my coaches. And Armin Morin, which is top strategist in the world, is one of my coaches too. <laughs> so I, I I go in deep. And when I, I've been on stage with every top person you could think of, every top person. Amazing. So what, what would you say is the thing you're proudest of so far? To see, it's, it's not proud of me. It's not proud of me. I'm proud to see that other people have the experience to actually get out of that shell. When they understand that what I'm telling them, uh, say, I see, I know so much psychology. I got a lot of education. I'll get into that in a second. Yeah, yeah. What I do is I know I learn how to read people. Like I right now, I can read you. I can sit there and see your physiology of your face expressions, your body language, your tone of voice, and all that stuff, even in the emails. So what happens is, I sit there and read the person. So if they're a mechanic, I lower myself to that level. Say, hey, listen, if a battery goes, blah, 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 if this happens, what, what would happen? And then they give you the answer that you're actually looking for, but in terms that they understand. So, and then that's when you, that's when you have to go to their level and then bring it up to there to the right level. So I, I learn how to read people on that and go from there. Doorbell. <laughs> Sorry. Always the case is literally seconds before we came on, the bin men decided to come here. So you can't always you can't always help that life is going to get in the way. And that, I guess you're on the right show. I mean, we're called authentic achievements because life happens to us, what, however it's going to go. But yeah, I just leave it in God's hands. Right now, I leave it in God's hands. Um, you know, hey, I got my my boy right here. And you know, when it comes to books, um, I opened up a publishing company, as you mentioned, Magnetic Entrepreneurs. Well, they hate. The, the, the main uh, umbrella name for it was coaching and everything. I brought people through a lot of things. I mean, I've spoken in front of 2.1 million people in one shot, um, and it was it was a big one. It was it was huge. It was really nice. It was a good feeling, and that was, wasn't was alone. It, was, it wasn't it was my actual gig, but I was invited to have a space four-hour gig, and I invited certain people. So I had Reggie Russ from the Buccaneers was on there. You know, I had some pretty famous people, Bob Proctor and, you know, a bunch of people that I know. Kyle Wilson, Jim Rohn's ex-business partner. He's a good buddy of mine. Um, John Chin, he did the uh, he did the uh, uh, Think and Grow Rich movie. Yeah. Uh, you know, like th these are all personal friends of mine that became personal friends. As a matter of fact, when I was in the hospital and I had COVID, and uh, Kyle Wilson, Jim Rohn, and, and a bunch of other people, they, they sat there and phoned me up. They say, hey, listen, do you have a computer there? And I said, how am I going to get a computer? He was going to fly his private jet down to give me a computer just to watch Thick and Grow Rich. Wow. I said, what would that cost? He goes, oh, about 10, 10 grand or so. He says, don't worry about it. He says, well, fly down there. We'll rent the car. We'll give it to you, and then we'll leave. Amazing. And I said, "Is are you for real? He goes, you're a friend. Why wouldn't we do something like that for a friend? I said, but that's 10 grand. He goes, so what? You're a friend. And that's when I realized, hey, listen, you know what? They kept telling me, we need you. And I said, you need me. You're the one that's up here, and I'm, like, trying to climb. He says, but you're the upcoming us, so we need you. That's when it stuck to me. It's like, wow. You know what I mean? Like, that's when I realized that climbing to the top isn't about climbing to the top alone. It's bringing people with you that you're coaching to climb together so you're not lonely. It's so true as well, isn't it? Because actually, you know, I meet loads of amazing people like yourself. And and if they're too far ahead of you, they can 
inspire you, but they can't actually get you to make the change because it's yeah. too far away. You can't conceive how you're going to get to that level. Whereas actually someone who's three or four runs ahead of you, that feels much more achievable, doesn't it? That feels a bit more like, well, maybe... If you're the smartest person in the room, they'll get the hell out of there, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And uh, Les Brown, actually, Eric Thomas said that to me, not Les Brown. Les Brown, I was coaching Les Brown's daughter for four years. Wow. Believe it or not. I mean, of all people to be coached, you wouldn't think that a girl at that high level with a father being legendary father, right, being coached by a guy like myself. And the reason why it was is because she didn't want to be like her dad. Yeah. She wanted to be her. You know what I mean? So I had to separate that. That was a hard separation. And that put a little bit of conflict in, like, oh, well, I want my daughter to be like this. Well, it's not your wife. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it, it worked out well. I mean, it worked out well. I mean, I still, I was still on stage with uh, Les Brown and, and Bob Proctor. I was sandwiched between the both of them the one day. Right. You know I mean, it's like, and Bob Proctor, he gets up there. He says, I don't know if I should be up here. And they're like, why? We want to hear from you. He says, no. He says, I don't like getting on stage after a good speaker. I said, Jesus, that felt good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. he, for him to say that about me, uh, that was good. That was a good feeling. I love that. But it's because you're relatable. So you're able to, and this is part of the challenge is um, it's some of the theories feel too complex for people to really understand. So we need somebody almost to translate it for us so that we can go, oh, it's not that complicated. It's not unattainable knowledge it is you know if i if i keep learning if i keep asking questions if i'm you know i, I have a, a mission with my little girl that we live our life of passionate curiosity and you know for, for me that that's the most important skill staying passionately curious learning something every day asking more questions so that you better understand and i think that's why people like you are, are, are so invaluable to us is that you can actually take something that perhaps feels unattainable and make it relatable. I loved how you talked about you know, reading the reading the person and then being able to meet them where they are and I take the reason why I'm able to read a person. It goes back for when I was in, in organized crime on uh, straight forward. I mean, you want to learn that person's not going to attack you. You want to learn that, you know, your safety kind of thing. This is your space. If you come near it, then you're going to do what you have to do to take care of that. Um, and, and the thing is, after I got clean and sober, I actually went and got all this education, but you don't see that education on my wall. And the reason why is because I didn't do it to impress anybody out there like yourself or anybody else. I did it to find out what the hell was going on with me. So my education consists of, I got my grade 12, felt weird because everybody else was 16, 20 years junior to my age. So then I got my social service worker diploma, my addictions degree my BA in psychology, my master's in counseling psychology, my harm reduction, mental health crisis, and 200 doctorate degrees. Now, when I was in the publishing field, I mean, I published a lot of people like Jack Canfield all the way across. And I'll be honest with you, I did over 500 books. And probably about 350 of them, I didn't write any chapters at all. I had someone else write them for me. And that's how good it became. You know what I mean? So I, I got well-respected for empowering other people but at the same time, growing myself, because I right now, still to this day, I'm still taking upgrading classes to upgrade myself, different, different philosophies, different things I do. And the reason why I'm able to read people now is because I was able to look at me and find out why I was the person I was. Now I could utilize them skills and say, well, how, who can I help today? I love that. And I think it's, it's true, isn't it? Very often, I know for myself on my journey, mine was to learn how how why was i who i was and how why was i being how i was so i went to unpick all of that do all the introspection to to kind of go if you don't like it you need to take back the pen and you need to change it one of the best ways to do that if if you're interested or anybody in your audience is interested it's called the california four step this will take you through 300 questions it it be careful Make sure there's someone you could debrief with because there's very, very deep questions in there that would bring your bring some things out that you don't want out. But it's entitled to bring them stuff out to surface and to learn how to deal with those emotions. It starts with your childhood. It even asks you about, like, straight forward, some embarrassing questions. I mean, it'll talk about masturbation. It'll talk about your parents, how they got along, their grandparents. You know what I mean? Like, all these different people, youth, it talks about the childhood, youth, Talks about your here and now, talks about adulthood, but I'm telling you, it, it'll ask you questions 
It'll bring things up. It'll surface things. So make sure you have someone to debrief with and then talk about this whole thing as you go. So talk about the youth. Talk to one person you could trust. If you have to go to a church to do it, then do so. If you have to go and do it out in a, in a barbecue session, like a, with a fire pit, talk about it. Just let the person be there. But don't let them give you empathy versus, I mean, think about it. Sympathy and empathy are two different things. When you're sitting there giving a person a Kleenex, you're overtaking their, their power away from them. You're not letting them live those emotions. You're actually taking those emotions on with you. All right? So make sure sympathy say hey listen i can relate to this i can understand where you're coming from but let them do their own dwelling and their own adjusting and their own digesting i love that it's, it's so true you know i was, think even if you've been in a similar situation you don't actually know how the other person feels because you're no. not them so you're not able to view it through their emotional lens because that will have been created by whatever's gone on in their world up until then but getting comfortable holding the space for them so that actually they can deal with it how they need to deal with it mm. but know that they're not alone is an invaluable gift to give somebody isn't it it is so true i mean like um when i sold my company magnetic entrepreneur i actually went out of my way and stepped back from the coaching for six months i've owned two franchises for six months it's, it's home care services for the elderly and Recently, it's like last month, it's like, you know, like I've been pulled back to coaching. Um, the CEO of Think Grow Rich is telling me, listen, we miss you out on that stage. My son wants to talk to you, and he, he, he's got one of the biggest uh, uh, for school education, what they call tutoring services out there. He's multimillionaire services that are begging me to come back to coaching to help those out. I'm thinking, well, these are high-end people. Yeah. asked me to come back to coaching and then i put it on facebook like hey you guys want me to come back to coaching i'm looking to come back yes 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 so it's like okay well i this weekend alone i'm selling those two franchises and signing the paperwork and i'm and the next one i'm moving into it's called the next level coaching inc i love it so, yeah and are you excited about this this next part of your journey well you know what it's not a next part of the journey to me it's just continuous um because no matter I, I don't i don't really get excited as people think i do because i get more excited when i see someone understand what i'm talking about i get more excited when i see them overcome that small tiny little goal that they thought was the biggest mountain ever you know what i mean it's the simplest thing that really sparks that cheer i don't get excited my wife will say y'all do you get excited you just you just made thirty thousand dollars i said well, i don't get excited over that I get more excited that the fact that they took the chance to make something difference in their life. I love being the person there to watch them grow. And that's why I want people to grow with me. I got people I brought in the forest with me. Mary, uh, Mary Ann Padgett for one, Les Brown's daughter for another. I brought them both into Forbes with me in the article. I just mentioned their name and I gave them a mention. And, and Mary Ann just went, Whew. you know what I mean? Like it just, it's crazy how you can grow if you have the right person there. That's that's so true. Because you know, one of the things that you know, I always thought is so important is belief. You know, what we believe to be true is going to be true. And actually, belief is something that we can also lend to people. We can lend them our belief in them when they're struggling to find their own. And the impact of that when you see them, as you say, achieve that thing that they thought was impossible, or um, realize that they that actually there's more that they can do, is such a, an amazing piece. How would you know, how do you suggest people you know, watching this might be able to best get out of their own way? Well, when you were saying what you were saying there, it's called expectations. Expectations is a number one killer. For instance, this month alone, um, I want to go out of my way and make ten thousand bucks. That's my minimum. Ten thousand dollars is my minimum. If I only make nine hundred and eighty dollars. Am I going to be hard on myself? I'm going to be happy I made that money. But expectations will kill you, will drag you down, and you won't be able to achieve the next goal. If I have expectations, I say, listen, if I just have one person this month that I work with and I achieve that, anything more than that is a bonus. Now you're feeling the energy. Now you're feeling, all right, now I'm motivated. But don't have expectations on, oh, I want 50 people this month, and if you don't reach it or the amount of money you're going to make, don't, don't go there you are really going to drag yourself down. Another thing is, stop bloody focusing on the money. 
focus on the passion you have to give others, the money will follow. I love that. It's, it's so true, isn't it? When we focus on how we add value and how we help, then the rest of it sorts itself out. And it seems counterintuitive at the start, doesn't it? That you're going, right, just right. Focus, on doing, focus on doing the right thing, focus on putting the value out there, and the rest of it will come. But it always does. It always follows. Yeah, it does. I mean, I, I had to learn that the hard way. I mean, I was always, here. here's, I'm going to tell you a little story. I was just starting off my journey 15, 16 years ago. I was broke as hell. I was saying, okay, who, who's going to have be my first client? And, and like, I didn't know nothing about coaching. I didn't even know how to bring this person. I just went by knowledge. And ah, I'm going to say this, say that. I'll, I'll, I'll read them. I'll figure it out. Right? I'll use my, my way I was working with the bikers or whatever and try and figure it out that way. So I said, okay, well, let's do it. And then I went to an event. The guy beside, beside me smelled like, I'm going to say pig shit. It's like he was working on a farm or something like that. And the next thing you know, um, it's like all day long, he's talking to me, and I'm thinking, well, this guy's like down and out on his luck or something. Maybe I should talk to him. Maybe I should get him on Facebook. Maybe I could be working with him for maybe, I don't know what price. I don't think he can afford much, but I'm thinking in my mind all this stuff, right? So he's talking to me, and I said, hey, do you have Facebook? I said, I most certainly do. So he adds me to Facebook. And then I go home, and I, I sit down, and two days later, I digest everything that was going on. Then we start talking. And he looked like a whole different person. I said, well, you look different today. I said, you don't look. He says, well, he says, the other day I was actually moving a friend of mine that was on a farm. And he says, that's probably why I smell kind of bad or something. And he goes, but I'm really the operations manager of Thick and Grow Rich. Wow. I said, holy shit. <laughs> I guess we're not coaching you today. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. It is always such a small world, isn't it? It's, I was yeah. and, and another thing on top of that is to just give you a little bit more of a pump. He ended up being my coach, but he wanted $1,400 up front to start. Within two weeks, I had to pay the other $1,400. I had $2,100 in my bank to my name. I had bills coming up. I literally had bills coming up within 20 days. Like, I, what am I going to do? I got rent to pay. I got this to pay. I got that to pay. And he told me, he says, are you worried about what you have? He says, but here's the thing. Wait, when you have something, you don't have something, that's when you have to do it. If you can't afford it, do it. You will be able to afford it afterwards. I said, listen, I'm going to leave my hands up. I'm going to go in. I was new in the game of being sobriety and that. I gave him the 1400 bucks. Knots were all over the stuff. I felt like puking and everything. Within within 10 days, I made seventeen grand. Wow. He taught me that don't focus on the money. Focus on your passion. Put your passion out there and, and guide people the proper way. Uh, give a solution to a problem. I'm telling you, man, that's a key. Give a solution to a problem. You will have a lot of people working with you. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's so true, isn't it? I, I used to work in, in corporate life, and I said the number one thing you've got to work out first is if you're a want or a need. Yeah. Uh, because if, if they need you, then you've got to solve a problem. If, they, if it's a desire-based piece, you're never going to help them if you're just solving a problem. You've got to not only solve the problem, but – achieve the dream i've i've had people honest to god i've worked with people that i work three to six months and and they're doing everything proper as soon as they're not working with me they go right back to their old way they wanted to feel like they were doing something right at the time i've had people pay me twenty three thousand dollars and never seen them again they said oh i tried you tried what you never you made an appointment Right. And then I've had like I've had I bet you in the last two years, two hundred thousand dollars came in my pocket and I've never seen those people again because they got too busy with their lives. They, they wanted to do. Oh, I, I, I forgot or, you know, I didn't have the time. I was too embarrassed to tell you what I was feeling. Or I said, listen, I don't give a shit what you tell me. I was living on the streets for seven years. I've been in and out of jail for 17 years. I've watched people get punched out. I've watched people get hurt. I've watched multimillionaires come ask other people for help. And I've watched the different angles of things. I'm a watcher. Yeah. And when I watch these things, I sit there and see these people achieve. I said, you're no different from anybody else. I said, you could be up there with other people, but you're in your own bloody way. Yeah. And that is one of the biggest challenges, isn't it? Is how much we get in our own way. Um, and what we say inside our head sounds so plausible. 
um, that we start to believe it <laughs> until we work with somebody who can help us get out of our head and realize that actually, you know, we live in a world of polarity, don't we? For every up, there's a down, for every left, there's a right. So for everything we're telling ourselves that can't happen, the opposite is also true. And we get to choose which we focus on, don't we? Well, here's the thing. When you're coaching someone, don't give them your expertise. As in, okay, well, I'm going to coach you on psychology. I, I know a lot about psychology, so guess what? We're going to teach you about psychology. They don't want to hear that shit. It's boring and it's long and it's disgusting to do. They want a solution to their problem. So utilize inside yourself, muster up the fact of what they really need, come up with a solution to their problem. The ideal of, of coaching is not long term, but you more or less get them to the level where they can achieve another goal and another goal, and another goal. If they're, if they else, if they outgrow you, that's a bonus. Don't look at it like, Oh, I just lost one. No, you didn't. You let that person pass you because of your knowledge. Now step back and let them take their, take the rewards for it. Me. I, I have a guy, right? Check this out. The movie over there, right? The documentary, the guy sit there and says, Robert, we won another award. I said, go ahead, tell people about it. But, I said, you don't really have to tell him my name. I don't need the recognition. He goes, that's kind of weird. He says, uh, why don't you need the recognition? I said, well, first of all, I said, I got more than enough recognition. I don't need that. And then the girl I sold Magnetic Entrepreneur to, that was a different way of looking at things because she was a nobody. I said, look, Magnetic Entrepreneur, if you Google it, it's high end. It went global. It won so many awards. It, it did the Guinness World Record. I mean, it's People know it as me behind it. I said, utilize my name to benefit you. There's a difference in getting the, the solution to a problem and the and, and making sure you got the, the situation taken care of. Don't sit there and give me credit if you did a movie and you're the one behind the scenes. You did the work. You get the credit. But now, Magnetic Entrepreneur, I raised, put out there, and that's the difference of getting uh, you know recognized. I love that. It is. It's, I think it's as well. It's that. Um, it's that being able to give back, isn't it? Be able to to kind of reach back down and help the next person. Up. Because I think if we always do that, and I had a boss many years ago who gave me what I thought was great advice. He said, "Your job is always to make yourself completely and utterly dispensable through competence, not incompetence." He said, "So you've got to get people to grow past you. So if you're doing your job well, they should. You know, they will be." needing somebody that's bigger than you but as you do that you're also growing as a person too aren't you because you're now able to coach them to get to that level actually as they as they say <laughs> the yeah, time it feels, good. It, feels like, good. Yeah. it really does it feels good to bring the person to that level but think about how much recognition you need out of that yeah i do things listen i'll do things behind the scenes that i know i've done for people i don't tell them the reason why I don't tell them is because I want them to feel that they're actually doing it on their own. They're getting that recognition on their own. I'll never tell them. I'll never let them know. I do so much behind the scenes for people. I know so many people. I'm well adjusted and well, well stationed in all different people. You wouldn't believe the amount of people I know and the high end, low end, middle end and, and different categories. I know people out in your area I've worked with. I mean, I got songs written about me. I've got movies about me. Um, there's just so many people that recognize my name and know who I am that, you know I mean? Like straight out forward, it, it's become a brand itself. You know what I mean? But at the same time, they'll never know that I gave them that push behind the scenes. The guy that did my, my documentary says, you know, I got to admit, I don't know how you did it, but it was like, I started working with you today and tomorrow was like, woof, all of a sudden I'm packed till January. And I said, well, you did it. You did it yourself. And he knows for a fact I did something behind the scenes, but I'll never admit it. But you but you gave him that you gave him that that's what it's all about. Isn't it? And that, that space yeah. to the courage to step into our light. Because I think often we worry it's our darkness that's the problem. And actually, more often than not, I think it's our light. I think it scares us that we might actually be good at something. Um and that uh, how many people how many people do you know? Um They'll walk around, it could be in Manchester, it could be UK, it could be anywhere, it could be in Toronto, it could be anywhere in the world. Oh, look at me, I'm doing this. Look at me, I'm doing that. All of a sudden they're going, they're not getting the support they need because they're losing the people because of the fact they're focused on them. Yeah. 
right? I don't focus on me. I focus on people around me and who I can bring with me. I am a tough coach. I'm not going to say I'm not. I know I know the limits, and I'll push to the limits, but I'll make sure you get there. I will. I, 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 at terms, at times, I want you to hate me because you know what? That resentment will make you work harder. There's an old rule I talk about. It, I mean, ET mentions it. I'll give him the credit for it because he mentions this part of it. He mentions if you want, if you got your head under water, what do you want? You want your air, right? You want to be able to breathe. So now, if you if you want air to air to breathe if you want your dreams come true as bad as you want that air i call it this is the part where i take the credit do the 18 inch rule from your head to your heart put it from your head to your heart put that emotion behind it you'll achieve it yeah. i love that because we do don't we? we we for the things that are really really important to us we always find the courage we always find the tenacity to get through to to find them mm -hmm. find a way through and actually you know i've i believe life often only makes sense in the rear view mirror when you're going through it it doesn't always make a lot of sense but when you get to the other side and look back you go ah right that's why that happened and this happened and those bits needed to because i needed that level of learning i needed to be put in an in that uncomfortable a position that my only choice was to push through um how are you gonna, are you gonna be humble otherwise it's like right now, so, you know, people are looking at me. They're looking at my shirt and say, oh, he's got all this stuff on his shirt. That Well, so what? They're my painting shirt. Big deal. I'm relaxing. I don't have to wear a suit and tie. I won't wear a tie. You invite me to a vet, I won't wear a tie. You know what I mean? I just won't do it. I want to be me. I don't I don't dress up to impress you. I dress up to relax. I'll go on stage with shorts and a T-shirt. I don't mind. But I'll give you a message that will be a very impactful one. I don't have to have a fancy car in order to be rich or, or even look like I'm rich. I mean, the more money I make, the more I'm able to help someone like yourself or anybody else out. Yeah. And they don't realize it. Well, no, and I think sometimes the most, some of the wealthiest people are the ones that recognize that actually it's not the money that's important. Um, it's actually, you know, some some you said, like you said, some. <laughs> yeah, and it is, it is, um, you know, I, I look at, you know, I'm very blessed. I've got a little seven year old, and, you know, I value most time with her. Um, seven year old i got a 32 year old 31 year old 28 year old 19 year old 17 year old and this weekend a six-year-old wow and sometimes i'm the old <laughs> i'm the baby sometimes <laughs> i think we i think we all get into that but i think you know you, when you look at life through the lens of a child mm. they see the wonder in the simple things they That's see the the you say, the curiosity, don't they I, I've been walking up the stairs and, and I was tired one time because you'll know I'm a workaholic. I, 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 I am a workaholic. I'll, I'll go until I need to help you out. I can't do it no more. I'll go to walk up the stairs. I, I felt like I, I kicked the bottom of the stairs. I said, ah, shit, that hurt. My, all of a sudden, my son runs over and he likes to copy me and he kicks the bottom of the stairs and says, ah, shit, that hurts. <laughs> so you got to be very careful how you mimic them. Sometimes, I mean, I do have a trucker's mouth. I'm not going to say no. I mean, I am married into a Christian family. My my mother-in-law, who's working for me today, actually, uh, one of my last ones, um, says that God's going to take care of my mouth one day. I said, just leave it. Tell him to leave it, man. It's my personality. Don't take that away from me. I said, look, he's got the lifestyle. I don't do the stuff I used to do. I don't break indoors no more. I don't beat up people or get beat up myself or whatever which way it turns. I don't even focus on that. I said, yeah, I might have a temper for about two minutes. It's not as bad as having it for six months anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, it, and I think the thing is, you know, we think that we're super rational beings, but the reality is our emotional brain responds faster than our thinking brain, doesn't it? Yeah, so well, we've yeah. just got to give ourselves um, some leeway. You know, my, my little girl <laughs> is mortified because last year on my birthday, glass flew out of the cupboard and I swore. Um, and I wasn't even a fast forward. I think I think I said shit. Um, and she's mortified because she was like, Mummy, you don't say that. And I was like, It's once in seven years, Luffy, let it go. <laughs> I try really they, hard. they hear it all. They hear it all. <laughs> you like you say, they mimic, don't they? They bring everything up. And and for me, that's been one of my big drivers to keep learning, which is how do I make sure that I don't become the thing she has to get over when she becomes an adult <laughs> and she doesn't have to unpick all the bits that um, that I've inadvertently done to her because I don't think we intentionally hurt people, do we? It's just if anybody gets a chance to watch uh, my 
my uh, documentary. You're going to see my childhood friend in there for when I, like I'm 52 going on this year. He, he was three years old when I first met up with him. And he still talks to this day that we're best friends and everything. Now my son, he wanted to be a gangster. You'll sit there and see stuff in there. Like, you know, he wanted to be a gangster. And I told him, I said, the first one out of that backyard's the gangster. And everybody's like, you're going to beat the shit out of your own son. And I said, listen, I'm going to go in the backyard. And I want to see who the gangster is. As simple as that. You know what I mean? No matter what's going on. He goes, but you live the lifestyle in and out of jail and fighting people, beating people up, baseball bats, coming, hammers, knives, nails. He says, you name it. He says, but you're going to go in the backyard with your son. I said, like I said, first one in that backyard is the gangster. Two weeks later, he changed the way he looked, changed the way he talked, changed the people he was hanging around with. He started wearing suit and tie. You won't believe today he finished police foundations and he's looking to be a cop. He's going into the force to be a police officer. He said the only thing he wants to do is when he's a full-fledged police officer is pull me over. He said, I want, I want that rush. And then you have my probation officer in there too, talks about the stuff when I was a probation in the probation field. And then you have uh, one of my clients, my, my high-end clients in there. Plus you have a police officer that actually sat right here in this room and he said, he said, Strail 40, he says, I looked at Robert's record, and I looked at Robert's record, and I looked at Robert's record. I had 42 charges, uh, 28 jails, I think it was, I was in or something like that. And it was, like, I, I did 17 years. I, I'm not ashamed of it. I would not change anything for the world, but uh, it, it's scary. <laughs> it was scary. I even went back. You'll see in, in the places, like, uh, I, I went back to these jails. I actually sat in the jail where Par Bernardo actually was housed wow. in his actual jail cell that I went, I looked up like this. And then you got the other guy, Russell Peters that broke in, raped all these women and killed them, but wear all the weird clothing. He was the corporal for Canada, basically. And, you know, like that's a big job you have a well-recognized one. And you're out there killing and murdering, dressing up like women and raping. I was in his cell too. Yes. And that made me feel like very ugh, disgusted made me feel ill, like, I mean, but also it said up on that cell wall, let me out, I'll do another 25. Wow. Like, are you serious? Like, wow. And it made me think, when you go, when you visit places like that again, it, it brings back memories. Yeah. It brings back memories. It just allows me to, to believe, okay, well, I don't want that lifestyle again, so I want to make sure I stay on track. And I do that for debriefing for myself. Yeah. I don't do that to help my clients out or, or something like that. And and I don't really call them clients because when I was I was a registered therapist for 15 years, I was also a counselor, drug and alcohol counselor for many, many years. So I don't say clients. I don't like saying that because it makes it sound like kind of rudish. I always I always sit there and say students. Yeah. Makes them feel better too. Yeah. I I love that, Robert. I could literally chat to you all day, but I'm very conscious that we're that, that we're coming towards the end. So, how can people get in touch with you, and how can they right down below there? You get you see the website there, uh, or you, you know, Robert J. Moore. You're not going to miss me. Google it. You're not going to miss me. Um, you can go on Facebook, Robert J. Moore. You, um, I'm starting to set up everything. Uh, next level coaching, and you know what? You believe in yourself. There's always someone that believes in you more. And you know what? I could see the things that you can't see because you're hidden behind the mirror. You're hidden behind those those emotions that you don't want to let loose. I'm the kind of person that will break that wall down. I'm going to be a little rough. You're going to be okay at the end. And, you know, once you actually pass that, I, I always say it this way. Hold yourself accountable, all right? You owe you. All right? Another thing Eric Thomas says before, he says, you know, you can go to a, you can go to a shopping mall. And, you know, hey, this this is not the right size pair of pants. I want my money back. But you don't hold yourself responsible for what you do. You don't sit there and say, no, I'm not going to do TV today. No, I'm not going to drink today. No, I'm not going to do this today. Listen, if I go to a jail and I speak there, you know, for free, literally for free at a jail, or if I go somewhere and speak for $100,000, I'm going to tell you right now, not one of them, not, there's no difference in what I'm going to give. I'm still going to give 120% because I believe in me. Believe in me. You have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in what you're doing. You got to have the knowledge of what you're doing. Don't just come up with bullshit and fake it. Don't be scattered on the stuff you do. Focus on your brand. Get to know your brand and bring people in properly. I know people that are bringing in, even myself, three to 5,000 leads a month. Automate shit. Don't just be yourself. Automate your stuff and let it run. 
If you want to work with me, I encourage you to come talk to me and have a free consultation. See if we're a good match. You may not like the way I talk. You may not. I might not like the way you talk. But you know what? That might be a better fit if it's that way, because then, then you know what? You're going to work harder to change, and I will too. I change because you change, and that's how I work it. I love that, Robert. It's been an absolute pleasure to chat to you, and I look forward Likewise, to having yeah. this conversation. And I love that whole just have the courage to be yourself. Um, and for well. me, that's the stop I, being other people. They already got the recognition. You know, they don't need it anymore. <laughs> and it reminds me, I always love a quote. So if you don't mind, I'm going to end on one of which I think was, I think it was Oscar Wilde that said, um, be yourself, everybody else is taken. And you've clearly um, demonstrated the power of being yourself. So thank you so much for joining us, uh, Robert. And thank you all who are watching and listening to us here at Authentic Achievements on USA Global TV and Radio. It's been a joy to share time with you. And until next time. Take care.